We're in Algebra 2 at 10.2e, and we're going to talk about a unit circle with a radius that equals 1. We had six previous videos for Chapter 10 now, and if you become lost or confused, you could just click on the description and watch the previous videos to catch up. A unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1. It's got one unit. And we can determine if points lie on the unit circle. We can use this equation. x squared plus y squared equals 1. So do these points lie on the unit circle? So we're going to use that equation. We've got the points 0 and negative 1. We just substitute them into the equation. So that means we have 0 squared plus negative 1 squared. Negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. So yeah, it's true. These points do lie on the unit circle. Let's take a look at this one. We've got the square root of 3 divided by 2 for x. And we've got a negative half for y. We put it into our equation of x squared plus y squared equals 1. Does this x value plus this y value equal a 1? Well, if we square the square root of 3, we get the square root of 9, because it's square root of 3 times square root of 3. It's a square root of 9. And that gives us a 3 for our numerator. And then we have 2 times 2. That's a 4. So that gives us 3 fourths on this side for x. Negative 1 half times negative 1 half is a one positive 1 fourth, isn't it? So does 3 fourths plus 1 fourth equal a 1? Yeah, it does. So it's true. It does lie on the unit circle, these points, okay? So remember, we're using x squared plus y squared equals 1. What about this? Our x value is a square root of 2 plus a square root of 3, and our y value is a 0. Well, if we square this... We're just going to get the square root of 4 plus the square root of 9, which is 2 plus 3, isn't it? When we see this, we can just take the radical signs off and get rid of the exponent. So we got 2 plus 3 plus 0. Does that equal 1? No, that's a 5. So that's false. These points do not lie on the unit circle. Now take a look at this one. This one's a little bit more confusing. We've got our x value is the quotient of pi and 4 and our y value is a quotient of 4 and pi. Now you would think, oh yeah, same numerator, same denominator, right? Well, no, don't jump the gun here, because we have to put it in the x squared plus y squared equals 1 format. When we square this, we get pi squared over 16, and we get 16 over pi squared. Now you may still say, oh yeah, it's the same thing. Well, we're not multiplying, we're adding. When we square pi, it's approximately 9.8596 over that 16. And this side would be 16 over that 9.8596. Now, when we add these, we need to find a common denominator to add fractions, remember? To add rationals. So, take a look at this one. If we had 2 fifths plus 5 halves, would that equal a 1? Well, no because we need to find a common denominator, and it can meet at 10, right? So 5 got, got multiplied by 2 to be at 10, so we multiply the 2 by 2, so we get 4 tenths. That's an equivalent fraction, right? And then for this one, it's, this 2 is multiplied by 5 to get to the 10, so 5 gets multiplied by 5. So is 4 tenths plus 25 tenths equal to 1? No, that's 29 tenths, so that's false. Because it needs a common denominator, it's not going to equal 1. So these points do not lie on the unit circle, okay? They do not lie on the unit circle. Our next video is going to be 10.3a. We're going into a new unit for Chapter 10. We're going to talk about the equations of ellipses. So we did circles. Now we're going to do ellipses. And... I'm going to add this video to the Algebra 2 playlist, and there's going to be a link to those previous six videos for Chapter 10, so you can watch them. All right? I'm really proud of you for watching these videos. You can either use them to catch up or to work ahead of the class so you can get A's on your tests because you'll know stuff other people don't, right? Have a great day, and I'll see you next video. Bye.